I handed out some more dead trees that were called Midterm Examination 1 Study Guide. Does anybody need a copy of that? Excellent. As I stand here, I'm wondering, if, did I put a copy of it on the web page? I probably didn't. Either. I'm never on the computer. So we had um, we had lab on Monday, and on Monday we took a look at the circuit that included resistors and photocells and light emitting diodes. That was the flavor of diode we used, and the operational amplifier. And we put it into a specific configuration. Um, we powered it and turned it on, and then we measured it as it um, sort of reacted to different situations. The one situation was the red light of the LED shining on the photo cell. We got a voltage. And then we blocked it with that stupid little business card with a piece of black tape on it. And again, the idea was to prototype, synthesize, what if we had a barcode, which is, for all intents and purposes, just a whole bunch of black tapes on a business card. And you just sort of do, you know, this is blocked, and this isn't blocked, and this is blocked, and this isn't blocked. It's not exactly like swiping your ID with a magnetic strip on the back, but that's what it is. The magnetic strip has is, has um, magnetic areas that are that are magnetized north to south, and then right next to it is magnetized south to north, um, or clockwise and counterclockwise. But it's very similar to a barcode. I have a real barcode on the back of my ID for the library. Does anybody do books anymore? I think you guys get. And we are going to be talking about the barcode itself uh, in a bit, specifically after um, spring break when we come back and after our first exam, which is a week from this Monday. So our Monday is coming up. is during lab in the afternoon, uh, starting around 2 o'clock. Um, and then we have as much time as you need. It is not a three-hour exam. If you'd like to take three hours, hooray, um, you can take as much time as you'd like. It is written as a 50-minute exam, so if you just want to do it in 20 or 30 minutes to get done, it won't hurt my feelings. Um, not a problem, out you go. Um, but what I did want to do was sort of allow the topics that we've covered over the past five weeks, this being halfway through week six, to sort of congeal. I, I love cold gravy as much as anybody else, so congealing just means that Everything sort of mixes together and some things stay back and forth and sort of understand what's going on. And one of the things that we've talked about very recently was this picture. And I draw it this way because especially for those of you who were with me um, last semester in our physics class, we did a lot of that. Almost all of our problems were that. Cartesian coordinate, we didn't talk about the other axes, we didn't talk about different quadrants, but we had some dimension on this axis and another dimension on this, and this was either time versus something, and maybe this was x versus <coughs> y. But the graph that we saw from chapter two of our book was we said this was art, and again, we already saw all the presentations, so you know what we mean by that's art. We don't mean we have lots of art, or you happen to have lots of uh, pretty things surrounding you. It could be that. It's just this is this is the artistic ability. This is doing art or being art, and this is looking for things that are different. Okay. And yeah, I don't want to turn this into you know it will because I can't shut the heck up. But um, when people talk about diversity and choice and different this and different that, I want to wear, wear, wear my hair this way, we need people from different backgrounds, usually on a grand scale of things, that's usually thought of as being sort of the artistic community. All those, those they, they have, they have, they, they've tagged themselves, they have ink all over them, they have different piercings, those artists, they're just out to be different, because different is different. Um, so we can find all kinds of real examples of artists being different. But there really is um, a real honest-to-goodness thing to thinking in the art, and that's to look at a situation and see what's different about it. One of these things is not like the others. Come on, can you tell me which one? Why is that important? Because as a human, 
if you're walking along and you're like, oh, look, the floor is missing, and you just keep on going, okay, that's not cool. We're on the third floor. I'm going to fall down to the basement, okay? Something is different. You need to observe, oh, something is different. We already have seen examples of this. If I were to build a tiny little computer or a little tiny robot, look at my robot. It's walking on the table, and it doesn't sense the end of the table. It falls down and goes. The robot just does what it's told to do. It doesn't have this ability to find out that its environment has changed. And if the environment has changed for real, and we don't notice it, then things go bad. Okay? So that's why we're, that's why I am, and that's why s systems scientists and systems think people make such a big deal about this art thing being important, is that it is important to find things in situations that are different. And then we have the science on the other side. Okay? And the science, in fact, I put art way over here at the end, meaning this is big art, plus art over here. I should probably put big science towards the top. Science. I have plus there because this is like in the plus y direction. This is the plus x direction. And science, same. Okay. Doesn't mean the artists are wrong. It's much better to be the same. Again, we've stopped that argument. We're not talking about a line that goes like this, where different is on one side and same is on the other. It's not a push or a pull. It's not us versus them. We bent this lane, this lane and one of the systems thinking ideas is to think in multiple dimensions at the same time. Why is same important? And we've talked about this a little bit when we were talking about this graph to begin with. If I walk into the emergency room and I'm open, my arm is sort of facing the wrong direction, I hope that the fantastic humans that are inside the emergency room go, oh look, scan, that looks like a broken arm that I've studied before and I know how to fix it. Okay? That looks like a problem I've solved before. So scientists are usually good at finding things that are the same. That's why you'll find biologists going out into the wild. They'll discover a brand new um, island and they'll say, here's my catalog. I found this many different species of flowers and this many species of birds. What are they doing? They're saying all of these different things over here, they're all birds or they're all species of a parrot. Okay? So they're looking for the sameness. It's not a bad thing, it's just a different thing. And we said, oh, if you're up here, you can do both. And we call that innovation. And we'll be trying to provide more evidence to describe innovation later on. It's a big word that lots of people use, but innovation is discovering something is different and then usually finding a solution that fits this situation and then solving the problem and moving on. Sometimes you need to realize the situation is so different that it's close to a previous problem, but you need to invent new solutions. Again, that's innovation. So different problem, this is right from our presentation. Problem formulators. Okay, guys, what's going on? What's the problem here? Okay, you gotta tell me what the problem is. Over here. Problem solvers. So usually what things people say, well, I go to college and I want to be a scientist, I want to be a problem solver. Or problem solving ability is really, really important. That is really important, it's fantastically important. And sometimes science departments will even say that. We make problem solvers. That's awesome. In Isbit, um, we do both. We do, we think we like to talk about problem solvers. They're not problem makers. These aren't troublemakers. I'm not saying the artists are anarchists. They're just, they're, we're saying these folks are able to discover what the problem is. If it's not a different solution, then the thought is we already have a solution for that. I went home. I opened the faucet, I got a glass of clean, safe drinking water, and I drank it because I was thirsty. 
Okay? We've already solved the problem of getting clean drinking water to our citizens of Philadelphia. However, if you visit some remote place without a water system, and all you have is a puddle of rain that rained four or five days ago, and some animals had already washed themselves in it, that's a problem. Okay? What's the problem? We don't, we don't clean drinking water. That's sort of an artistic. Things are different now. So what I want to do with this theme up here is I'd like to actively pretend, actively play, actively do this process because this is what we're talking about when we're systems thinking. So I killed some more trees. They have given up their lives valiantly for your education. Thank you, tree. They're awesome. <coughs> This is not homework. I'm not asking it to go away. I'm not asking you to fill it out and turn it in and upgrade it. I don't think I have any points on it. It's just stuff for us to look at. Okay? This is the type of systems thinking we can do if we're thinking about the idea of electronics. Okay? So let's look at this. Uh, number one, uh, using the circuit sketched below, determine the value of I total. What is the total I. Um, there's a circuit sketched below for those of you who were with us last semester and we did some problem solving. Okay? We were given the problem by the physics question. The first thing we did was we read the problem and then the second thing we did was we drew a picture. Okay? So this time the problem sort of already stated and there's the picture for us so let's go ahead and draw this picture. So back forth, up here, and this is plus, and this is minus, this is a 10 with a little v next to it, this is an r with a little 1 next to it, and this one says 15 with a k and an omega, and this has like a little tiny sign that says i with a little t-o-t -T below it. Okay, that's our u. It's like, and you guys have heard me say this before, it's like the Wizard of Oz. I hate to use in 1940s, 1950s. Has anybody ever seen the Wizard of Oz? Where does Dorothy start to get to the city of Oz? Kansas. She's in Kansas first, but then she lands in Oz, and she has to go to Emerald City. Remember how she, how she starts? She's in the ocean, the house or something? The house falls down, back and forth. Remember they, there, was, there, was, there, was, a, there was a path, there was a solution. You had to follow the damn yellow brick road, right? Right? And then the question was, the yellow brick road is a really long thing. Where do you start on the yellow brick road? <coughs> There's a lot of moral things inside it. I'm oh, sorry? Munchkin Lands where it started. But where, do you, especially the, the video version. I know there's been the whiz after this and make it more. I think the yellow brick road literally started like a spiral. And there, was like, uh, there was an end to the road. You had to actually force her to walk over to the, to the beginning and then sort of walk around in the circle. And then it took off. Right? You guys remember that uh, that scene? That there, there was an actual beginning to the little the yellow brick road. Mm -hmm. It just started out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, that's the metaphor I'm using for this. We have to start simple. We have to start somewhere. We're not gonna, so this is obviously a, I think a simple picture. Okay, I mean you talk about these things. Different, same, back and forth. That's fine. How about same? Let's do the science thing. We're in the science building, the Hollywood Science Center. Um, what's same about this image with the things that we already talked about in electronics? What's same about it? I know we're not belaboring the, the hell out of this point, but this is, we gotta start somewhere. We gotta start simple. What's same about this? What have we done before? So what, what what are things that you recognize as being the same thing we've done before? This is the number of the voltage. This is volt. So this 10V, it means something? Is the voltage? I know I'm acting stupid, but I'm just playing along, right? So voltage. And we won't, we won't start to get all the time. That's 10 volts, okay? What else, what else is the same? This is current. This is current. 
Current is just a word. Um, what does it mean? What is it's something we've studied, right? What do you mean by what do you mean by current? The flow of electrons, fantastic. In fact, um, I love you for thinking like a physicist. It's the flow of positive current, though. Remember, the electrons go the opposite direction because the damn electronic noise. That's I'm being hateful on the engineers. They can't handle the flow of electrons, so they have to go positive current. Is the flow of this positive something? Yeah, the electrons go that way. But yeah, the flow of charge carriers. Yeah, I like that a lot. What about this crap over here? Is this something we've seen before? What does it mean? Again, it's a resistor. It's a resistor. What does that mean? It's the first one. It has to be the only, that's a that's a subject. What does this guy mean? It's the value of this. And what 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 number does that represent? Fifteen thousand. Fifteen. Thousand, right? And what does this guy mean? Ohms. And what did what mean? What, what, what it, it's ohms, but what is an ohm? Ohm is the resistance. It's just the value of resistance. Yeah. Yeah. resistance. So every symbol on this board has a story behind it. And I'm a, I love to tell stories, as you guys know. <laughs> tell the story again. Okay. This is what it would mean, we mean by being a trained scientist. Scientists go to school, whether it's high school or maybe you learned this in junior high, maybe this is the first time you've seen it. We've talked about it for the past few weeks. They're problem solvers. One of the things they do is they look for things they already know. Okay? Problem formulators is what's different about this particular case. Well, it turns out what might be different is exactly the question that's being asked. So we'll go back and we'll read this. Using the circuit sketched below, determine the value of I total. So they want to know, they, whoever was the they, equals, I don't know. We said that's current. So they have told us the problem. So the problem formulators have already done their job. At least they've done one of their jobs. And they said, what's different about this particular problem? Well, it's a, it's a circuit that we all recognize, but... They're asking this particular problem, problem formula. Okay. Great. Now that we have the problem, the next problem is, what is the value of I total? Great. Same. How do we solve this? Use the formula. Where are you going to get the formula from? We already have it, right? So I know it sounds silly, but it, it's, it's, yeah, it's the same formula we already have. This is, this is what scientists do. They have a toolkit. Oh my gosh, where have you heard me say that? People who worked this last semester. All physics, we said toolkit, toolkit, toolkit. We're getting more tools. We go into our toolkit, we pick out the correct <coughs> toolkit, and then we fix it. Okay? What's hot on. You guys have watched HTV or Netflix, do you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah? Um, for the longest time, the cooking shows were, were hot. My daughter's 22 and she's about to. So we're watching dresses all the time. But um, the, the flipping houses type people, you watch any of those shows? Yeah? So they walk in and they see this house. It's about ready to fall down. The ceiling's halfway done. And they go, oh, well, we'll just do this. We'll just grab our tools and go. Okay? So that's what we're doing here. It's, it's, not, it's, not, a, it's not a renovation problem. We're not flipping this problem. Flip this problem. Um, but we're going to use our tools, right? So we already have a tool for that. Do we have a tool that exactly answers this question? Do we have an equation that exactly tells us what I total is? Or we need to... Do we? Uh, I don't know. What, 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 what tool, the tool do you want to use? Oh, wait, wasn't the equation B? Wasn't it equals IR? V equals IR. It's a fantastic equation. Okay? You know I'm being silly. Because it's, it's Wednesday and I love being silly. Is this the equation in the form that we need? No. Why isn't this fantastically awesome, perfectly uh, legitimate, acceptable equation? Why does it no longer fit the question we're trying to ask? Because it's all compatible in that I. Hmm. This guy solves for volts, but what's different about this problem is we want to solve for I. Okay? I know. We're back over here again, okay? Something's different about this question. We don't have the exact tool, unless we wrote it down with I, so we have, 
we have Ohm's law, V equals IR, but it's not, it's close, it has the right components, but this is a different situation, we need to solve for I. So, the problem is, I need to solve that, do you guys know how to solve this for I? What tool are we going to use to solve this for I? How did you get that? It's V over I R. You have that version? V over I R. Can I give props to the algebra teachers in the room? We've studied algebra before, right? So that's a tool that we already have, right? We've already been to algebra one, we've already been to algebra two. It's the same thing that I learned in algebra. I need to solve this for I. Take this guy to the other side by dividing both sides by I. The current equals V over R. Back over to the different side. How about that formula? Is it different from what we're asking, or are we ready to go? We're ready to go? Yeah, there we go. Problem solving process inside physics last semester. I think we were plug and chug. We were close to plug and chug, so now we have plug and chug. Problem. The current. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Ding, 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 ding. Something's different. V equals I R, I equals V over R, fantastic, but they don't want I, they want I pot. That's different, my different alarm's going off. How do I take care of that, how do I handle that? This is different than what we've learned. Stop the presses, I'm done, it was hard so I stopped. They want total current, not V equals I R. Shit, what do we do? How do we solve this problem? They want us to solve for I total, the total current, not just V equals I R. What's the difference between this I current and this I current total? What's the current over the resistor? This is the current voltage over the resistor. What's special about this? The whole circuit. It's the whole circuit, okay. So is it appropriate? So that's the whole circuit. And you said this is the current just through the resistor. So what's different? And before I'm going back and belaboring the hell out of this point, what's different about this current for the whole circuit and this current for the resistor? What's different? I'm sorry. They're the same. They happen to be the same, Mr. Scientist. Yo, in this situation, they're the same. Does that work? Is that cool? So they want to know what I total is, and all we have is an equation to solve the current through this resistor, but in this situation, following my arrow, they're the same. This guy is equal to I total. Is this going to cause a plane to fly out of the air and hurt people? No. But this is the same process. The same process is, oh, I missed that detail. I should have checked. I know we're going step by step by step. So yeah, this I that we want really is I total equals V total over R total. Or we could just say the I over the resistor equals V over R, and then when we're done, that says the same thing, I think. So yeah, not much heavy lifting. This is easy to get to the answer, I hope. The voltage from there to there over this resistor, do we know what that value is? We need to know the voltage between before the resistor and after the resistor, that's what this guy is. How do we find that? So this is the voltage lab. I like to use letters like A and B. How do we find that voltage? I like the answer. It's a circuit. If there's only one resistor. Mm, mm, all these all, all these caveats. There is the difference between this positive plate and this negative plate is 10 volts. And another way to say say exactly the correct things you said was if you take your finger and follow this 
as long as you're connected by a wire, the voltage doesn't change, at least not appreciably. We know that real wires are, have real resistance, but, but if there's nothing in between my wire, it stays the same. So, so the potential here, 10 volts, is the same as over here. Again, looking for thing, isn't it different? No, it's the same this time around. This voltage across the resistor, this V, is 10 volts. Because you guys know how to solve simple problems, of course you would have done that without thinking about it. You just do it. Doers. You just solve the damn problem. Okay, I'm just specifically making us to think over this area. I mean, just do it. 10 volts. The resistance we're worried about. What's different about me putting an answer in there? Because I saw this back in the day. 10 volts divided by 15,000. Did anybody already punch this out? What number did we get? 0.6. 0. Point millions. <gasps> 0. Point zero zero six 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 amps. Yeah. Which is the same as saying. So there's one more thing. Oh, you're right. <coughs> There we go. Again, differences. What's the difference between this number and this number? Well, they're different because I use this milli prefix. All the milli prefix does is a shorthand for those three zeros. They're equivalent. They're back being a scientist again. They're the same. Last semester in problem solving, we said, is it reasonable and are the units correct? Yeah, I think we're good. So if we were doing this for homework or a test, I'd do that and we'd be out. Did we answer the question they asked us to do? Fantastic. We belabored the hell out of going back and forth. The reason why we do this is as our problems get more complex, sometimes if we're not constantly looking for the difference, we will assume something that isn't correct and we will solve or answer the wrong problem. It'll be, oh, I know how to solve that. Three. The great, fantastic. That's not the problem I asked. I asked this problem. It's a little bit different. Same thing with, again, big problems with scientists and engineers. I asked you to build a building that was this high, and instead you build a building that was that high. Okay? Or I asked you to build a, a bridge over here, and um, they didn't meet in the middle. Sometimes that happens. It's not because people are stupid. It just means that they, they solved the wrong problem. So we're constantly sort of bouncing back and forth and making sure that we're solving the right problem. I'm going to slow down this painstaking step by step. Let's, what's number two? Using the circuit sketched below, determine the values of I tope. Ding, ding. This is just like question one. Ding, ding, ding. I understand the same. And the voltage A to B, the voltage B to C, and the voltage A across the C. I need to draw pictures again. Again, we just did this, so I know what these symbols mean. That's no problem. This is still 10 volts. That's the same. This is I total. That's the same. This is a position called A. I like to call it A. This is the needle. This is called B. This is called C. This is a resistor, and so is this. But now we have two. This one's called the first resistor. This one's called the second resistor. And these guys have different values than before. This guy is 12,000 ohms, and this guy is 24,000 ohms. Okay. Just consolidating what we've already done over here, this looks very similar to the problem we just saw. It looks like it's very similar to all the electronics questions. I know what these symbols mean, so we're good to go. What is the I code? Let's just start there. Equals... All right, it's the same problem as before. Scientist, it's 
the same. So let's just solve it the same way we did before. Use this V equals IR, I equals V over R. What's our value of V? N. What's our value of R? difference here. It's a different problem. It did turn out to be a different problem. You can see with your eyes it's different. We have two resistors rather than one. It's different. The different alarm in your brain should go up and say, okay, great, it's close to the problem one, but now it's different. I better go find some tools that allow me. Fabian said, what did you say? 36,000 volts. Where the hell did you get that? That's not 36 and that's not 36. Together, you just made things. up a number. Yeah. No, they're in series, so uh, you add them up. Series? What the hell is that? And then you get 36. There you go. So yeah. It's a different situation. Let's go see if it's close to something we already know. And the thing that we already know is, oh, look, there's two resistors. There's more than one resistor. And we know that resistors go together in two primary ways, right? They go back to back, one after the other, or they go together with the parallel thing. So we can, we're humans and we're intelligent and we understand how we've been, how we've learned. So we know it's not that, because we can see that it's not that. We can see it's this, it's, it's series, and it has a word for it. We go to series. And if we grab our equation sheet, um, which I have buried here somewhere, we know that there are equations for a series circuit. So this is a series circuit. That's the same. And the total resistance for the entire circuit is just add up all the individual resistors. The giant Greek letter sigma means sum them up. So we've already solved this problem before. We know it's the same problem as doing series. That's 12,000 ohms plus 24,000 ohms equals 36,000 ohms. And I switched between K, which is abbreviation for those three. Fantastic. I did it with a lot of marker and a lot of words and a lot of your valuable time. Um, Fabian just said, Damn it, it's 36,000. Why? Because you're human and you understand that you can go back and forth and do this all day. I'm doing this all day. The idea is, the thought is that if you keep on doing this, that you spend most of your time appearing to be right there. Okay? This is what we call innovation. So we're trying, trying to sort of define what it means to be an innovator. So let's solve this goofy problem. 10 divided by 36,000. Did anybody get the number? What'd you get? 0.27 millions. 27 milliamps. So 27 milliamps, yeah, if you're not happy with the mill, you have to do the zero. 27 amps, right? It's <coughs> tiny, tiny, just really, really small. Okay. Did we solve the first problem? Yep, I told you. <clears throat> Fantastic. How about the. Next problem, B, A, to B. This is different than previous problems. They didn't ask us the voltage from A to B. So the first thing we're going to try to look for is see if we already have a tool that does this. Do we have a tool that does this? We do. <coughs> Not being challenged, I'm just asking. We do. Of course, the answer is on. Yeah, we have lots of tools. Which tool do we use? We want to find the voltage from A to B. Do we have a tool that says V equals something? What is what is that tool? <coughs> we love V equals IR, right? Now wait a minute, I can't mix metaphors. What's different about this? This guy has the voltage A to B. So what do these guys have to be? They better be the current A to B and the resistance between A and B. I'm like inventing new stuff. I've never solved that equation before. I just invented it, okay? Remember that this V equals IR is fine as long as the 
subscripts match. V tote equals I tote times R tote. Whatever you want, as long as it's the same. Okay, they have to be the same situation. Can we answer this problem? VAB is what we want. Write down what you know. Write down what you want to know. Do we know the current from A to B? Do we know the current right there? Current A to B equals, I don't know. You said yes, we do. So you're saying it's the same. What is it that's the same as? Why is that? How can you justify that? It's the noise. It's the finger test, right? If you start here, and this is I tote. If I don't have to split my finger, yep, it's the same current. We already learned that the, the current through every part of the circuit is 27 milliamps. Okay? So it turns out when I'm doing this, I have to watch out for abbreviating it with prefixes. That's a difference. So I'm going to put in 0 0.00027 amps to make sure that they don't accidentally mix metaphors with megas and kilos and micros because you can't cancel out megas and kilos and micros, but you can cancel out zeros. So this many amps, what's the resistance A to B? Where did you get that from? Because it really is, that's the case, right? That's something we knew, right? 12,000. <coughs> Anybody punch that through already? 3.33? Fantastic. Why is the, the resistor 2000 and not? Did I not say 12? Oh, I'm sorry. You can't see it from an angle. There really is a 1 right here. The, the, oh, I see. The, the shade right there. It really is 12,000. This guy, okay. It's wrong. Next question. Voltage. You're saying like I just put the answer right. B to C. It's <laughs> we want to find the voltage from here to here. That's a different question. We already solved voltage A to B. Now we want to solve the problem voltage B to C. Any idea? How do we have a tool? Which tool do we have? Same one we used before? This guy? <coughs> Current B to C times resistance B to C. You like that method? I'm going to need some values, right? What's the current B to C? We already solved this guy. What's the current B to C down here? It's the same. It's the same current, right? <coughs> 0 0.00027 amps. What's the resistance B to C? Because that's what it says. 24,000. This. And then they want to know what the voltage A to C is. That's a different question, right? It's a different voltage. That's a different question. Do we have any equations that can tell us that? What equation are we going to use for this? Same equation? This is the current. A to C times the resistance A to C. What do I get for the current A to C? <coughs> what value should I use? Why? Because this is the same. Oh, I know you just said Because this is the same. That's exactly the right answer. Because this is the same. What about the resistance A to C? We already said that, right? Because we did this guy, 36,000. Add these guys up. Why? Because it's the same as the series circuit. This 
without even calculating it with a calculator. Does anybody have a guess as to what the answer is? Ten. Hey, genius, where'd you get ten? <laughs> Why ten? It's what we do all the time. If someone punches this to their calculator, do you get ten? Is it really ten? It's nine point nine 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 because of the round off errors, but really it's ten. Ten volts. Okay. Does this method seem to work for these last three questions? Well, we have to assume that, that they're correct. But yeah, the V equals IR works for this guy, it works for this guy, and it works for this guy. What if I would have asked you these questions in reverse order? What if I would have said, what is the voltage between A and C? Here's our circuit, 10 volts over here. There's A, there's C. What if I ask you the voltage between A and C? Could you give me an answer without doing all the calculations? Yes. How could you do that? Where would you get 10? Start with A. Because again, this other, I want that word. It's the same. I didn't even think of that one. No, thank you. You can do it automatically, right? It's the same. They're the same. This is just this A. There's no resistor. It's just this point. It's 10 volts. We already knew that, okay? There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing it mathematically, but gut level human, okay? 60 year olds, you know, that's 10. How the hell did you do that? You just, humans sort of find. Shortcuts, especially if they're humans with lots of experience. What do humans with lots of experience have? They have a giant memory bank where they've seen the same or very similar situation. And they say it's 10 volts. So yeah, we could have done it that way. If we would have already known that the total voltage between here and here was 10, and then we calculated this was 6.66, .66, could we have found this last one? without doing a calculation. If the total drop is 10, and the bottom is 6.66, then what's the top drop? You could subtract them. You could do 3.33. Another thing that's same is the voltage A to C equals the voltage A to B plus the voltage B to C. There are different ways to solve the same problem. It's on one foot. Which one's better? <laughs> You're using, you use the reserved word today, right? They're the same. All of them are better. I'll tell you better. They're all, life is awesome. All the tools are awesome, okay? Whichever tool you're most comfortable with, often whichever tool you as a human see first. There could be multiple solutions to the same problem. The one that you see first and you're the most comfortable with, that's the right one for you. Okay? Somebody else could have a more complex tool. As long as we get a similar answer and no one gets hurt and everybody's happy, then they're all equivalent. All right. Let me get back on Friday. We're going to do some more. Okay? Again, we're using electronics to really talk about this graph. This is, the, this is what we're learning in the class. Electronics is just a bonus.